Hi everybody, I'm so excited to walk you through today's what's for dinner video. We kicked it off with a stir fry ramen noodle. I have so many ramen noodles in my house and so I decided to try to make a different variation of the soup and instead use soy sauce and sesame oil and create a little side dish instead of making it as a soup. So I boiled the soup as uh, normal. I used six packets, I'm a family of five. And I also served it with some frozen chicken, uh, Asian chicken that we got from the market, which I also put on the stove. And then we went to a farmer's market and we picked up some uh, freshly made wontons, which we had to just put in the oven and, and heat up. I can't link to them. It is just a local Long Island mom that makes them. They were out of this world. And uh, it, this was pretty much a heat and serve uh, dinner, but it was very easy to make, which I enjoyed. So while my ramen was cooking, I sort of heated up my chicken and broccoli and my wontons and waited for everything to boil. Once I got rid of my water, I put a few cloves of diced garlic and uh, some oil in just to brown the garlic. And then I added my sesame oil, which in hindsight, I really didn't need to start with olive oil, but I did. And this is my sesame oil. I put a ton of sesame oil because remember, I used six packets of ramen noodles. So that was quite a bit of ramen noodles that I had to uh, toss and coat. So this is what I started out with. This is my garlic and sesame oil. In goes my ramen. And then I added my soy sauce and I don't really have a, a direct amount. I mean, maybe it's a third of a cup. And I tossed and that's as simple as it can be it can't get any simpler than that and I just uh, tossed until everything was coated and then I just served everybody a portion and it went there is no leftovers for this dish it was absolutely fantastic we will continue to make this over and over again I really really enjoyed it after dinner, I had uh, the family help out with cleaning, which is always a wonderful treat. Everybody always helps out at dinner. The children usually uh, clean up the table and bring the dishes to the sink. And then my husband normally loads the dishwasher or my older teens normally load the dishwasher. But tonight it was all hands on deck. Even my little guy participated which made it really easy for everyone to get through it all. We weren't gonna have dinner tonight because sometimes on Sundays we have like a dinner. So we eat one time on Sundays and we have a really big lunch. But then the kids were pretty hungry and my husband ended up surprising me and making dinner while I was binging on Netflix. <laughs> My daughter's choking. <laughs> Are you okay? No. Hands up. I didn't even know. I didn't even know he was making dinner. So I just sat down and I said, I have to record what he made because it's actually really good. So Belle, let's just whip it around. What did you make in the salad? Uh, that's pretty simple. It was just red peppers and yellow peppers, cucumbers, with a ton of olive oil, lemon, salt, pepper, um, oregano, Italian parsley, lemon, and uh, Parmesan cheese. Okay, and this was actually really good too. Super simple. You did? That's just like a pastina. Um, we just took a look at the pasta, and then I just put a lot of olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic, and onion. And then that's just chicken breast, kind of like just baked. And these are breaded Purdue, Purdue. Purdue chicken breasts. Yeah, those you just have to heat up and okay. then just cut them up and then mix it in and then throw a little extra olive oil and salt on top. And then 
just a pizza from Lidl. Lidl. That was just, just a, a pizza. Yeah, and this was just yummy. a thin crust. And it's yummy. So everyone's just having a little salad, a little pasina, right, right. and a little pizza. And we got some fresh bread from a uh, farmer's market that we went to. And that is our meal for the day. So I just, I, although I didn't show you uh, us making it, I wanted to show you us eating it because it actually is such a quick and delicious meal all put in and it's really easy to uh, replicate. The next morning, my son and I decided to make banana bread. And this is a recipe on my blog, so I will definitely link it below. I have it printed out uh, on my island for easy reference. My son loves to bake, loves to bake with me, and I always let him uh, get his hands messy as often as possible in the kitchen. So he was responsible for mashing up those bananas. <laughs> And uh, it was a lot of fun to watch him. He pulled out a few tools in the making and, and he just kept picking new tools to help him along on his journey. And I just watched as he continued to add more things for us to wash. So after we uh, did our best with the mashing, we put everything into a pan. And I will say I ended up having to put a... Uh, aluminum foil over this uh, on the on the top of my pan and cook it for an additional 15 minutes over the 45 because my pan was not long enough so uh, I'll put the link below but just know that if you have a short a shorter pan you might need to cook a little bit longer and then it was time to clean up all the mess that comes with baking No matter how many times you unload that dishwasher, you always seem to have more to put in. The banana bread came out wonderfully, wonderfully. We really enjoyed it. And as you can see, my son, uh, it wasn't, the bananas weren't entirely mashed and mixed in. So we had huge chunks of bananas in our bread and they were such a treat. Our last dish that we are going to share with you is a crock pot chicken, and this is with a bit of a twist. I had a cherry barbecue sauce that I picked up on my most recent grocery trip, and I have a bunch of cans of pineapple, so I figured if I could combine the two with some garlic and onions, we'll see what happens. So I had some Purdue chicken on hand, I threw it in the microwave for two minutes. Just to, I actually, I let it uh, defrost for a few hours. I didn't put it in the microwave. I let it defrost for a few hours, as you can see. It was still a little frozen. And then I, um, while it was still a little frozen, I put it in the slow cooker because I knew that I was going to cook it on low for five and a half hours. And it wasn't that big of a problem to have it be a, just a little bit uh, fro frothy. So one small onion chopped, roughly chopped. I didn't really worry about getting it too small because honestly, my children don't really love onions. So I knew that they would just be picking them out. 
And then whenever I use a slow cooker, I normally put spinach. I always have frozen spinach on hand. So even though pineapple and spinach, does that really go together? I don't know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but I, I just put it in because I always like to put spinach into anything that I make with the slow cooker. And um, it ended up actually being really fantastic. We had it for dinner. Um, after me filming and recording this. So I know how it tasted. I, I actually got rid of the juice of the, the pineapple can, just in case you're wondering. I just put the chunks in, but I did put the whole, I did put the whole barbecue sauce. A quick toss with some garlic and a little salt and pepper. And like I said, five and a half hours to cook on low, only because I did it so early in the morning. And once again, uh, putting more in the dishwasher. And this is how it came out. And I, I was going to put it uh, as a side dish to potatoes, but I actually didn't have enough potatoes. So we ended up doing it over a bed of rice, which I just love uh, using my rice cooker, so that wasn't a problem at all. I just uh, always make two cups of rice whenever I'm cooking, because I like to have a little bit of leftovers for the next day. So I have two cups of rice in my rice cooker. That's sort of a set it and forget it thing for me. And I was, uh, you can make rice bowls, or this time I just went ahead and put it on a regular dish because I was going to make a side salad as well and I needed a little bit of space for that. All right, that is the video for the week. I hope that you really enjoyed it. I have a couple of more recipes in the works for my next video, and I'll have that out in a few days. If you enjoy what I put out, I would love a subscribe or a like. Thank you so much for following along.